actually, I'll talk to you just a second about it, but we got about three elements to share. But before I kick that off, uh, Tammy had sent me something over. And, I, and what was crazy is I've actually done some reading on this about the Kentucky Derby. And I want, to th I want you to think about this because last night, Coach Todd Rowland, a uh, great friend of mine, did a – I mean, just what he shared on the New Age Live was super powerful. How many of you would agree with that? If you're on the New Age Live, he was talking about the vision. Uh, he's a, Todd's a big picture guy. Like, like he, 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 sit, he sees the big picture. And he was talking about the big picture of our industry, where we're going, our company, the timing, everything. And, and then as he was talking about that, I'd been looking at the Kentucky Derby. If for, have it, raise your hand if you know, maybe you put in a comment, if you watch the Kentucky Derby, you've heard anything about the Kentucky Derby, you know there was a major underdog that happened at the Kentucky Derby. And so I, my mind was thinking about that. And then Tammy comes in with the alley-oop today for the slam dunk for us all to think about. Because everything in life, if you talk to Elon Musk, oh, by the way, might just so happen to be South African. So if you talk to Elon Musk, if you talk to Warren Buffett, if you talk to uh, Jim Rohn, obviously Jim's passed, but if you were to be able to talk to him today, if you were to talk to Tony Robbins, you know, Les Brown, um, uh, Zig Ziglar back in the day, if you were to able to talk to, John Maxwell, which Tammy actually worked inside of that camp with John Maxwell. You know, if you, if you were able to, to talk to the greats, I think what they would tell you, they would all line up in the fact of you got to position yourself for the opportunity. You got to position yourself. And you never know when that positioning is. Like, it'd be nice if we knew. We would just rest up to that point. But you got to know when to position yourself. I mean, you got to be ready. You got to be in the position when the opportunity arises. And so, Andrea, if you wouldn't mind, share this as we kick this morning off, because I want you to think about this, or this afternoon, I should say. I, I put this together actually because Tammy sent this to me. But, like, in, it's a two minute lesson here. And if you have not watched the finals of the Kentucky Derby, if you hadn't watched the race, Go back and look at it. Rich Strike was the horse. Rich Strike won the race. Rich Strike is getting accolades today, like everybody, like like crazy, crazy. But but if you'll look at the background of that, here's what it really means. Rich Strike didn't have the best starting position. What most people don't know about Rich Strike, the horse that won, was. Rich Strike was not even in the race. It, it, Rich Strike was not even in the first set. What happened was a horse got scratched. And Rich Strike was in this holding spot, was in this ready position. I, I equate it to almost like, have you ever been on standby on flights? Like you might get on and you might not, but you got to be ready. You got to be there. You got to be at the, you got to be on deck in case they call your number. That's where Rich Strike was. It, Rich Strike was on deck. He was in the ready position. He had trained, went through all the rigorous work ethic, uh, the training. The, the, the jockey had to be ready for this moment, but was not even in the draw, was not even going to compete until one of the horses scratched. And when that happened, when that happened, got put into the block, into the launching block. The worst part of the launching block, by the way, it was, you know, the, the, not the best starting position. And so here's this horse centered around multi-million dollar horses. And this horse was like a $30,000 horse, Rich Strike was. But Rich Strike was in the ready position when the number got called. It ain't always about having the best of everything, being the biggest and the most favored. It's about the size of the heart and dedication to win and excel in everything. But we got to be ready. 
We got to be in the. We got to be. We got to be in the ready position when the opportunity arises. And and what I love about this is this was from a friend of Tammy's. It says, "I was there. It was epic. The crowd was loud and wild." And there was such a silence at the finish line when it all happened. Disbelief. Un like, what? It, crazy odds. I think, like, what was it? 400 to – I don't know what the odds were. It was stupid odds, okay? If you'd have bet on it, you'd have made a lot of money on that. But it said, this is how we all need to live life. Leave them silent. Leave them stunned. Be ready. And I share that with you today because 80 to 1, 80 to 1 underdogs, Missy Bruce. Yeah. Here's the thing. Are you, are you, you know, so many times we put so many parameters around our age, our, our, our well, I don't know if I can do it. I once did it. I don't know. You know, I, I live in Florence, Alabama. It might not be the greatest town. Like, I'm in South Africa. I mean, I'm just I'm just dealing with these amount of products. Like, like we put these parameters around us, and then you have stories like Rich Strike. It's like opportunity, opportunity. When it arises, am I positioned? Am I in the ready section? And if I looked at Elon Musk today, he'd probably say the same thing. There was probably a pivotal point in his life that he was in the ready position. And he struck when the iron was hot. Warren Buffett, same way. Greatest of all time. I mean, Tony Robbins, same way. It was probably something, a pivotal moment. And I share that with you because Todd Rowland spoke last night. He's talking about new age, talking about where we were at. It's like, how do you know that this is not the pivotal moment for you? And what's crazy about that is I was actually out of the country Andrea Rosser, I normally go, but Andrea Rosser went and she flew out and, and spent time with some of the most successful people in our industry as we collaborate together. Normally I'm there and it's a mastermind session. And Andrea, what did you say was the most eye-opening for you? Now, we're talking about people that are in companies in our industry because people go, oh, does people really make like, really good money in network marketing? Yes. The answer is yes. Like there's people in that room that's making, how about a million dollars a month? How about $4 million a month? And I can tell you right out of the gate, people making hundreds, $100,000 a month, $200,000 a month. And you go, well, that just seems crazy. Like, like, is that even doable? It is when you get in the right room with the right group of people. But here's what's even more important talking about that. It's the timing. Is it that they're smarter? Is it that they're, is it that they're more educated? Is it, is, it, is it that they came from a rich family? Andrea, what did you say the most eye-opening experience of being inside of this mastermind circle of all these people that's making a lot of money in different companies? What is it for you? Well, I think the biggest thing that I was most eye-opening was how different every single person was. Like there's not a um, cookie cutter. Like I think sometimes we can look at our leaders and think that we have to be like that person in order to have success. And I can look in the mirror and say, I don't look like our leaders here. But then you go in that room and everybody looks so different. The, the common thread is they got started and they got to work. Yeah, and, 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 and they all have a story of a mm -hmm. pivotal moment. Like, like what you don't know is the backstory of these people. Like you go, oh, my gosh, they're making, she's making a million dollars a month. But if you really were to dive down and listen to her, it's not that she's got a crazy, she does this crazy call that does all this stuff. It was that she was in a company. She was at the ready position. And when it struck, she was ready to go, right? She was ready to go. If she wouldn't have been in the ready position, she would have missed it. She would have missed it. Uh, or, or him, you know, th those stories are just so plentiful. 
and Andrea was talking to me, she said, that's the biggest thing for me. She said, because I can look at, say, a Todd Rowland, and she can say, well, I'm never going to be Todd Rowland. She said, but when I go to that, I get so much inspiration because I realize here's all these people making a lot of money. And what really happened was they were in the ready position, working, doing, when the, when, when it, the right time happened in the company that sent it into momentum. And that's, that's what I want us all to understand is when Todd sees the big picture, he fully believes we're, we're at that place where the people that are in the ready position. So I want to go ahead and kick it off. I want you to see kind of the start of this, Andrew, if you don't mind sharing. Is last week, I did something, and, and I just want to touch on this, okay? And I want to give you the chance to do this. But last week, set your intentions. We talked about I, Brent Palmer, will earn blank per month, whatever that amount is by May 2023, like I'm setting my intentions around the money I'm going to make this year, okay? What is that per month a year from now? But I want you to have a call to action. I want you to have somebody you can send it to. So Andrea is going to put my email up there, okay? It's totally like put your goal in writing and share it. Like share it. Mail your goal to Palmer Team Building 2101. Take a screen capture of this, okay? Like, mail your goal in, okay? It's not going to be shared with anybody, but it gives you a chance to write it down. Actually put a, an, a, 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 an envelope, a, a stamp, and actually put some thought around sending that goal out because setting your intentions, here's what we talked about last week, is we remember we, 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 we talked about looking at, okay, here's my goal, but then here's my gap, okay? Here's my gap of, of what I need to achieve my goal. Like, like where, how much money am I making right now? Where's my goal? What's the gap? Is it $1,500? Is it $2,000? Is it $10,000? Like everybody's different, okay? Everybody's different. Andrea, could you zoom out or does it show that on my camera? Everybody's different in the gap, okay? And here's the biggest thing we talked about that I hope was an eye-opener. I know Tammy actually reached out with me and Tammy had a conversation about this, but hopefully you see that. But when you're looking, like, look at your gal. Like, if you've got a group, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna move off this because I don't wanna confuse. And then we're gonna move on, okay? But here's what I would do. If you're sitting here, we talked about this last week, and, and you're sitting here, and let's say you've got a power line, and let's say it's doing 13,334. This is your power line, okay? But then let's say I'm just going to use one pay line, and let's say that it's doing um, 6,000 in volume, okay? And you want to get it to 13,334. And that number could be anything, okay? But figure out the gap. This is your gap. This is what you need, okay? Is, is everybody with me on that? Does that make sense? That's your gap. Now you got to figure out, okay, what do I need to do inside of this gap? I need to personally recruit personals, okay? I can put them in that gap. Okay, what else can you do? Create action plan for your brand partners that's in that gap, that's in that line of business that's going to create volume. Okay, maybe you run a contest. Maybe you do something. Maybe you create some action. I have so many people that are sitting there and they got a pay line that has this gap in between where they're at and where they want to be. And it's like, well, what are you doing inside of that gap? Are you personally recruiting? Are you creating activities that the team is now moving volume inside of that to increase your PV? Um, are you doing team calls? Are you doing team, you know, team functions, team parties, one-on-ones? <laughs> uh, 
okay? You start creating a bunch of activity around the gap in your business that gets you to your money goal, okay? That you have mailed in to, and I'm going to put this up there again, mail to, uh, somebody might be putting it in the comments, but I, for me, it's just an accountability. I'm not trying to be nosy. I'm not trying to, you know, this is, this is actually uh, uh, my corporate place, like my corporate house that you send this into. But, but it's just a way to go, okay, I'm going to be accountable to this. I'm going to be accountable to myself one year from today. Here's where I'm going to be. And then here's my gal. You need to include that. Here's my gal. Hey, Brent, here's my gal. Here's where I'm going to work. Here's what I'm going to go do. Like, and then take action because that in essence, thanks Andrea, that in essence is getting you in the ready spot. Just like, just like the horse. Okay. You're now, and thanks Tammy for sending that today, but, but you're now sitting there just like rich in, in the ready position. Why? Because you've identified your gout and now you're training. Now you're going to work. Now you're putting you're putting things together. It, it blows my mind when people know their gout, they know what it is, and then I look at them and go, "Hey, when when's the last time you put your team on a Zoom?" Uh oh, I don't do that. I don't do that because I mean they get on Todd Rowland's Zoom. Okay, we're going to talk about this in a minute, but Andrea, we just had this conversation. There is a lady that, that, that makes a million a year in our industry. And she does a Zoom every week with her team. Could you tell me? Because for her to be making a million a year, she's got to be like maxing out the line. She's got to be doing something crazy. Like, so Andrea, could you tell me sitting down and talking with her? Just if, if here's my point if Crystal Vance only knows what Crystal Vance knows, if she's only been in Lemu and seen Lemu, and then now she's in New Age and she sees New Age, she don't like Brent Palmer does not know any different. Crystal does not know any different. So, what's big numbers? What's small numbers? What's a win? We, you get what I'm saying, Andrea, million dollar a year earner. You sit down and you talk to her. She does a weekly event, eyeball to eyeball with her team. What is it? Um, averages about 30 people and a really big week is 60. 30 to 60 people a week. Okay. Runs a million dollar organization. And I know so many people, and if I'm stepping on your toes, I'm sorry. It's not meant, it, well, it, maybe it is meant to, because this is a chalk talk. It's like coaching talk, but it's like, if I've got a residual business, if I've got people, like, would you take like one, like 30 minute segment a week to look in the eyes of your people that is paying you residual income? Not leaving it up to Todd Rowland or not leaving it up to Crystal Vance or not leaving it up to Crystal. Like, oh, well, they're getting on theirs. No, they need to get on yours. And you don't have to have a hundred. You don't have to open it up to the entire company. You just need to look at your people that are paying you a residual income and talk with them and recognize them and love on them and create a community. And you go, well, I don't have 30 people. Put two on. Andrea, what'd they say? What'd they say about She two? started. This is the thing. I was like, I was so blown away by this. She started with three, sometimes four. And she consistently did it and just kept growing. And I thought, wow, we could all get one other person on with us, maybe two other people on with us. That's powerful. We, we've got people on here right now, you don't have to raise your hand, that would think they were an epic failure if they had 30 people show up to a call. And here's a lady that's making a million dollars a year that consistently puts... 30 to 40 to 50 people on the call. I share that with you. I hope that builds inspiration, not, not like, but, but listen, we have got, <laughs> if you know your gout, 
you have got to work it. You've got to work it. Like you've got to do that. And that's going to, a couple of things that we're going to talk about today. So, um, Todd lit a, I don't know, something in me last night, but I've known Todd for a while. And I, I don't know if coach is on here or not. I, I, I think he is, but, but I just, he, he can listen in cause I, I can speak for him on this because we've had so many conversations. But I've got three things I want to talk to you about today, and Andrew is going to put those up there. You you can look at them. Um, And I hope this is good for you. Here's my topics for today. Be a pointer, boredom, and then the August event. So I'm going to talk to you about that. We're we're all – if we're going pro, if we're going to go do this thing, we're all going to get registered today, just so you know, for the August event. We'll talk to you a little bit about that. Like we're 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 knocking that off our list. Like if you want you want to talk about a good investment to your business, we're going to all get registered for the August event. And if you're in another country, we got to create an event on the calendar for you. Like like I'm tired of let's don't worry about anybody else creating it. You go create it and then start building for it. We're going to talk about that. So thanks, Andrea, for that. So our first thing is being a pointer. I don't know if we got a slide for that, Andrea, but all we are is we're a pointer of people. So the two questions I got to ask you is, who's your two by two and are you using them? See, thanks, Andrea. I'm going to go back to this gout, (laughs) okay? This gout right here, look look with me now. I got this gout. I know where I need to go work. And for some of you, you have multiple lines of gouts, which is awesome. Like, it's so wonderful. Like, you've got this, you, you might have two lines, two pay lines or three pay lines that are not optimized. And it's like, crap, I've got three calls I could do each week. And, and, and give them action items and recruit into that business and, and get them recruiting into that business. And for every activity, every new thing that happens, customer or promoter or brand partner wise, my check's going to grow. Selfishly, my check's going to grow. Their check's going to grow. My check's going to grow. So here's the thing. Here's the first thing that you can do in this gap is personally recruit to it. And this is every one of us, like every one of us has got this ability to personally recruit. But the first thing you got to have is you've got to have a two by two. So, so Crystal Vance, just because we've talked about this forever, tell, tell everybody what a two by two is like, like two by two. If you're not, if you're sitting in here today and you go, I'm muscling this business by myself. Good luck. Good luck. You are not paying attention on the chalk talk if you're muscling it by yourself or you're just so stubborn that you're going to pr- defy the odds of network marketing that you're going to go build this without anybody's help, which the industry has never had anybody do that. So if you're that person, good luck to you. I wouldn't buy that course. Here's the course I would buy. And it's called two by two. So Crystal, help me out, sister. Well, a <clears throat> two by two is what makes this fun. It's uh, I can't, even when my, uh, like for me, like you get out there and you're, you're, it's not that your belief goes away, but you get tired. Anybody ever been tired? You're just like, geez, something happened, something go. Well, what's interesting is, is my go in my business was directly related to how much fun I was having and how many times I was out there doing two by twos. It'd be like, hey, BP, 
Uh, I think I'm going to like get something going up here in Wyoming. How, how about you fly out? Now I, I was awfully, it was, he was awfully nice to come out to Wyoming, but then he finally was like, Hey, why don't you go find somebody else to do two by twos with? And so, yeah, he, he's Brent anyways. But so who did I grab? I grabbed a, an Ashley Paulson. I grabbed a Valerie Randall. I grabbed a Melissa Van. You guys, we just had fun and we got in the car and if you're Brent Palmer you leave gum wrappers all over the car and you stop every 45 miles to go to the bathroom this is where you make memories though I will tell you road trips with Robin DeMio road trips with Justin Martin with Brent Palmer with with my upline I needed those times. I learned more in the car than I ever did on a stage. No, that and 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 that's perfect. That here's what Crystal's saying is if you're sitting here right now, no matter how long you've been in the business, and it probably gets worse the longer you've been in, you've decided or I've decided I can do this alone. But it's lonely out there. It's a lonely road out there. So if you're Andrea right now, or any of you, I would have to say today, you've got to go, Andrea is one of the two by twos, but who's the other? Like who is, who is her running mate? Like who is, who is this person? Is it Brent? Is it Tammy? Like, that's for Andrea to fill out. And I just called her Andrew. Sorry. Um, Andrea. Okay. But that's for Andrea to figure out. Because, but once you've identified, let's just say, all right, it's Brent. You know, it's Brent. So then here's the thing. If I'm going to personally recruit to my gal, Andrea is going to make her top 10 list. Okay, we talk about it all the time. And then she's going to become a pointer. All right, what does that mean? Boom, boom, boom. She's working, she's working me. She's working me with her people. Woo. That's called leverage in a business. That's called using someone else's talents to grow your net worth. And we forget about it. There's some of you on the call today that are not using any leverage in your business. You're not using any running mate. You're muscling in it by yourself. And then you're going home and talking to your spouse about it. This is a like real coach session, okay? You're going home and you're talking to your spouse about it. You're talking to your loved one about it. And they don't understand what you do. And then you're getting frustrated because they don't understand. You don't. They don't understand what you do, but you know who does? This person right here that is there to help you if you would just use them. So, so here's my point. If you're somebody and you've identified that gap and then you've identified a worker inside of that gap, how do you identify the worker? You do a call. You talk to your team. You get to know them, and then you identify them. And so you're sitting there, and now you've made that call. You've made that commit connection. And then, and then, uh, you know, I'm, I'm using an example here uh, uh, of Susan has identified that Billy is ready to go to work. And so now Susan – is going to make a top 10 list. Okay, look how this works now, guys. Susan's going to make a top 10 list, and she's going to tag Billy in three-way calls, three-way calls, three-way calls. But guess what Billy's going to do? Okay, Billy's going to do the same thing. And then guess what? He's sitting there doing the same thing. And what is he doing? He's, he's tagged Susan. So now in a week, they've done 20 – different things, one-on-ones, two-on-ones, three-way calls, all that, and it's all going 
to Susan's gap. Is it benefiting Billy? Yeah, it's benefiting Billy. But is it really benefiting Susan? Both ways. Both ways it's benefiting her. Benefiting her on personal enrollments, and then it's benefiting her on Billy, his personal enrollments, because it's all going into the gout in Susan's pay line. Please tell me if that makes sense. Cammy, does that, uh, just so I'm not, uh, if you can unmute, does that, does anything you see right there, does that make sense? Yes, it makes great sense to me. Absolutely. And that's where my energy is right there. <laughs> yeah, it, it's so, it's so simple, but yet sometimes it's almost looked over. Like you're trying to figure out the comp plan. You're trying to figure out the best video. You're trying to figure out, oh my gosh, we got to get this challenge going. We got to, we got a diagram. <laughs> Crystal said this yesterday, we were, me and Crystal was talking. She's like, sometimes you just got to sit down with somebody and go, oh, this is network marketing. Like actually talking and just enjoying each other's company and just conversating. And it's like, that's so much more simple than trying to diagram this beautiful piece of artwork that you're like, well, that's not what I'm good at. <laughs> but the conversations are like, almost like, oh, so nice to do that. So your two by two is getting these conversations and, and it's all done in three-way calls. Um, um, I'll give you a great example. Todd Rowland is one of, the, one of the best in pointing. He points people or he gets people to start pointing people. And that's why I don't know, you know, he's, he's somewhere, but he's sitting there thing saying, I want your link to jump on. Here's my thing for you today. This is the first thing. You got to have a two by two to grow a network marketing business. And you can't go straight to the top. So you can't go, if, if I'm, I'm using Susan because she's okay with me using her. Susan Sailing couldn't go today like, you're right, I need a two by two. I'm going to call up Mark Wilson. I want him to be there on spot for me. Or I, everybody call Todd Rowland today and want Todd to – no. You want a two-by-two two that's going to pick up the phone when you need them and that will be able to just have conversation. They can talk to Nick Pappas about soccer and how he was a coach. And it just – you just need a two-by-two two accountability, somebody that you can call and they can call you, and they're in that gout that you need the volume. And you go to work and watch what happens. Okay. Andrea, anything you want to add to that? I know I went over, I tried to go over everything with Andrea that way. Oh, you hit it I all. something. Okay. Nope. Now the next thing. So I want you to think about that. Who is yours in the gout? And then what are you going to do when you reach out to reach out to them? Tell them you want them. See if they want you. And then, Hey, I'm going to make a list. You make a list. We're going to start cross-referencing people and pointing people to each other through the two-on-one type simulation, okay? The second thing is that, that, that I talked about, and I'll pull this up. Look, people get bored in our business. They get bored. Our business can can get boring there can be boredom that takes place and sometimes you can get burned out okay now thanks andrea that's just reality so let me ask you a question has any of you ever got burned out of doing this business i have I've gotten bored, burned out. And what I've found, if I'm honest with myself, is I think I leave what I loved about this business. And I'm managing more. I'm trying to create more things. I'm trying to be smarter. I'm trying to make it something it's not. 
and I leave those conversations that I actually just enjoy having with people. I just enjoy learning about people, you know, and, but, but what we've got to realize, whether we've got one person on our team or 200 people on our team is if boredom is real for you, then boredom is going to be real for the people on your team. So here's my point. We are the shepherds of our team. Okay, this is point number two today. We're shepherds of our team. Our job as a shepherd is to keep as many in the flock as possible. <laughs> because, you know, let's be selfish for a minute. All of those little sheep in the flock is what for you on a monthly basis. Cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. It's money. It's money. It's auto ships. It's residual income. So all those people that are in, that you keep in the flock with you by loving on, by taking care of, by, 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 by seeing them, it, it creates a sense of community and it also creates a sense of not getting as bored. So how can I do that? Here's what I want you to think about today. And let's talk about it in a minute. Um, so we're talking about boredom. <laughs> okay. How do I create? Did I misspell that, Andrew? It's okay if I did. I don't care. Did I? We're just missing one letter, but it's not an important. Where, where, where's the? Okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I don't care. So <laughs> I do. I do care because I ask you. But here's the thing. Um. What's something I can do? What, what creates where things are not as boring? I call it curveballs, like curveballs in the business. Like what are you doing in your team right now where you're keeping things changed up? You're throwing curveballs, parties. So Betsy, Betsy says parties. What are parties? It's just getting people together. It's sampling some products. It's sharing stories. It's getting people together. And I call it the mingle is where the magic is. It's those little mingling one-on-ones that's going on around the party atmosphere. Well, all experience this. If you're in Colorado Springs on Friday, if you register, you're going to experience where I say the mingle is where the magic happens. So, I try at a party to get as many people as I can there. And I, to be honest, don't tell nobody, but I don't really care what goes on from the front of the room. It's like, once I get them there, like, okay, we'll share a video, tell a few stories. But I know that the magic is when the mingle starts to happen at the beginning of it, at the end of it, like the middle is just, it's just kind of, you just got to do it right? You got to, you got to share something. So you share a little something and then you mingle and the mingles where the magic is. And that's when I figured that out, I went, oh my goodness, we got the, I mean, I can't spell boredom. So I need something very simple, right? I need something very simple for me. And when I realized the, the, the parties, the, the mingle was the magic. I'm like, well, crap, that's pretty easy. I can just get people butts in the seat. We're going to have a good time, and the mingle will create the signups. So, parties is exactly um, the renew twenty eight day challenge. Okay, that that's a curveball in your business. The um, live shopping that. That's a curveball in your business. Now, if you're not promoting these, if you're not doing something with these on your team, there's actually a Renew 28 Day YouTube channel. If you didn't know that, you can go to Renew 28 Days. I hope Tracy don't mind me sharing that. I might have should have asked. Okay, um, sorry Tracy if you're on, but this is our stories, you know, and 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 we're going to have this big database and. 
thank, so thankful for him for that. But, but here's the thing. Parties, renew 28-day challenge, live shopping. What's some more? Maybe in the chats, if you can put them in the chats. I'm just looking through here. I want to see them. Andrea, can you unmute and help me? Company events. Yes. And contests. So co company events. Now we're going to label. I'm going to come back to this one because I'm going to put Orlando really big in this. I want you to think about Orlando coming up. Contest. Contest would be like Tammy going, listen, I'm going to give away 10 cookbooks to the first five people that enroll a customer. Okay. Uh, you make your con a contest is anything that creates action, anything that people get excited about, anything. So it's, a, but it's also a curveball in your business that creates less boredom in your organization. Because what happens if people get bored, they fall asleep, they quit getting on calls, they're not as energetic. And guess what? That gout that you need, wherever you've identified that gout, then boredom is going to take away from the volume over time. Okay? So if that's the case, I'm always creating new things inside of my organization. For so me, got, oh. okay, go ahead, Andrew. I was going to say what some people said in here, Zooms, sharing events, networking events, giveaways, road trips. Um, that's what I have in the comments. Okay, giveaways. Here's the thing. If you can lead with generosity, lead with generosity, find ways. I, I, for me personally, um, Curveballs for me is things like the coach's corner. It's if we pick a word a day, we invite people on it. Think about the coach's corner. We average between 40 to 60 people a day, and we have for over two years now. And we go live with the broadcast. So that's expanded. People share it. So where has those tentacles taken us? A lot of places. We do giveaways. We give away books on there. We send books. I don't know how many books we've given away, but we've given away a lot. We've given away a lot of things on there. Amazon gift cards. Um, and I'm just using that as some examples to build on, but you could reverse engineer it to your team, to your gal, to your thing. The, the chalk talk, this right here is a, is a, is a, is an example of, of doing something that, you know, you don't know what it's going to turn into, but you take care of your flock, right? You take care of your flock. Um, and then the biggest thing, and in, 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 in a lot of you talk about this, is all of this, what it really does is it builds community. It just builds community which everybody wants to be a part of something that, that feels good, right? Everybody in the world wants to belong. They want to belong to something. They want to be engaged with something. And the more you can make them feel like they're a part, then the more it's going to be attractive to them to stay engaged and to not get bored. Anybody else got any comments on that? I just, I want you to think all of this I want, I want, I'm going to keep bringing you back to this. But all of this, when I draw this up, I hope from now on we know what it means. But all of this is things that you're finding ways to fill that gap in the spots of your business. And maybe you do it to your entire business. But anything you do here in this gap is going to create volume. It's going to create, right? So. Well, all of this, so let me ask you a question. If I go hard right now and start doing parties, do I think that it would help the gout? Yes or no? If Eva Current says, I got this little, I got a gout right here in my business. I got a power line. It's good. 
but I got this gap. I want to get it to this. I want to get it to 13,334. I need 8,000 in volume to get it there. I'm not saying that's the case. I'm just saying. So she's got this gap. Okay, well, let's just go. Will parties help the gap? Yes or no? Put it in the comments. Yes. Okay, well, then guess what? If she's hungry enough, she'll start doing parties. Will re the Renew 28-Day Challenge help the gal? If she starts getting people involved in that, in the gap area, it'll help her business. It'll pump volume in her business. It'll make her business grow. Will live shopping, if she treats that as an event to the people in her gal, if she starts promoting the live shopping, Dr. Ginger's coming tomorrow, good health, good health, good health, and she puts that and she starts building for it in the gal, do you think that that will increase her sales? Absolutely. What about getting everybody to Orlando? Yep, that'll help her gal. What about running contest? That'll help that barrier. That'll help that group of people. That'll increase sales. What about getting them on a Zoom? Don't wait on Todd Rowland to get them on a Zoom. He don't know your gal. He don't know the group. Okay, you do though. What about giveaways? If you put giveaways in the gouts, it's going to create less boredom. It's going to get them more engaged. The more engaged they get, more activities you can give them, more it increases your money. Does everybody understand the flow of where I'm going with this? So sometimes we're looking so hard to create this magical thing this spreadsheet that's going to take us to the promised land, when in reality, we just got to find the area of our business we're lacking and we go to work there. And when you've only got 20 to 30 people on a call or 15 people or two people, understand there's people in network marketing making a lot of money, a lot of money that don't have big calls. And the reason you don't know that is because you just hadn't came into the inner circle of other companies to go, oh, so I don't have to have 400 people on a call. No, no, you don't. So, all right, any other thing, Andrea, is there any comments I can move? I got one more. We got 10 minutes. I'm going to do it. You're doing great. Okay. The last one, and Andrea is going to put it up here, is <clears throat> dare to dream. Dare to dream. Here, here's what I think we can all do inside of this group, inside of this chalk talk. We've got an event coming up in August. And for all of my beautiful people in Africa that, that, that maybe, maybe you don't get to get there, um, figure out something that's created that's similar to this. It's about three months down the road. Okay, thanks, Andrea, for that. So in the chats, we're actually going to put, we have ours in October. That's right, Nick. I forgot about that. Yeah, you've got yours in October. So that's perfect. I'm talking about three to four to five months down the road. Do you remember two years ago, we, we, I decided that we were, we were going to do the Eric Worry GoPro, and we started building for the event. We started doing calls for the event. Like, like it was like a five month period where we were just, I, I don't know, Andrea, it might've been longer than five months, but I told Andrea, I said, we're going to do this. We're going to start putting flyers. We're going to, we're, we're going to announce it to the world that we're going to get all these people to come to this event. It was a lot of work, but we put a lot of butts into the sea at that event because we made a commitment to do it. It was crazy. The amount of time, the amount of effort, the amount of, pour in to that. I'm here to tell you right now, the best thing you could do for not only your team, but especially your gap is to grab the Orlando event that is in August. You've got May, June, July, and August. The, the first, actually by August, the haze in the barn, meaning the people that are coming usually are the ones that are coming. But you've got May, June, and July to announce it to the world, to announce it to your team, to announce it to your gout that you're needing, and you make this massive push to Orlando. I'm talking about you go all out. It is going to be the game-changer event. 
it's going to be the one that every person you put into the seat is like $10,000 in your bank account over the next five years. Like you put it together and you go announce it to the world. But the first thing you got to do is get yourself there. Like you got to go like today and go, if, if you choose to do it, if you choose not to, it balls in your court. But here's what I choose to do. I choose to go get registered in the link that's in the Zoom. And I choose to mark my spot. And then once my spot's marked, I'm going to announce it to my team. I'm going to do a call to my team. I'm going to tell my team, look, just like I'm doing with you today, look, this is the event to be in because I want to be in the ready spot. I might even use, you know, I might even use – the, the, the Kentucky Derby as a motivational piece to go, I want us all in this ready spot because this company is ready to strike and I want us in the ready spot. August is the date. We can't miss this event. Just so a little red topic, we're going to have literally launches at that event you don't want to miss. But building for events is huge. And you got to have it. It keeps your flock together. It keeps things not as boring. It keeps somebody excited for something to come. They're not excited for you to go on a trip on your own. Here's what they're excited. They're excited about something they can be involved with, with you. Okay. So May, June, and July. Announce it to the world. Start grabbing flyers. When one of your team members registers for the event, make a flyer for them, blow it up, put it on New Age Nation, put it out on your regular social media page. Like, then you start doing calls to your team and you go, hey, Robin's, Robin's going to the event. Congrats, Robin. Now we got George going to the event. You're showing their flyer. You're starting to get the excitement because everybody can participate in that, right? You'd be shocked what you do inside of that gal, but it's, inside of the rest of your team if you're willing to go all in on that event, okay? And I believe that that is the next big major company event that if we started right now, imagine how many people you could get to on your team there, but then especially that gap in that volume you need to hit the goal, to hit the money. Remember, we started this thing going, I – I'm going to make so much money by May of 2023. So what's some steps I can take to make that money? That's what all this is centered around. That's what all this is centered around. So do you not think you're going to make more money if you get people engaged now to be in an event? Yeah, they're going to be engaged. But I mean, I got to build for it over the next three months. It starts with you. It starts with locking your spot. And so if you're in Africa right now, put the heat on Craig DeBrain. Like, like we need flyers. We need to go ahead and start building for this event. Like, where is it at? Like, so we can go ahead and start putting it out there. I want to go ahead and start getting people registered. And, and for the next three months, start building that energy. That energy. Eric Worre is a master at building for events. That's why at GoPro, he starts months ahead. And people are all, he has this analogy that if people are not like dog cussing you because you keep saying the same thing, you keep promoting the same event, like they're tired of hearing your voice. If they're not doing that, you're not building for it enough. And I believe that like, like, like we got to shout it to the world because it's where our company is. It's where we're going, but more so than anything, it's how you can maximize and go optimize that income position, go grow that gap barrier between where you are and where you want to be in your volume. So I got four minutes left, and I almost got hoarse today talking. So um, any last comments? Anybody got any words of that? just looking at this today, anything you want to add that made any sense? Nick, anybody? Uh, George, I'm just looking across. Cam, if you do, just raise your hand on the thing where Andrew can see it or unmute, however you want to do it. 
Andrew Jackson, Betsy. I see all of you on here. Craig Anderton, good to have you on. Ann Wilson. I see Sonia. Good to have you on, Sonia. Any any last comments? Betsy's hands up. Betsy, you right, can Betsy. unmute. Hi, Coach. Hey, hey I just wanted to talk about last night's awesome Zoom that Robin DeMio put on. And Robin made a statement. She said, after the New Age Live Zoom, I, you will find me on the phone. I will be on the phone making calls to promote for the Friday uh, event at Tammy Malby's house before the Super Saturday. And, you know, that declaration of I will, uh, it just really got me and I'm competitive. So I'm like, well, if Robin's going to be on the phone after uh -huh. being on multiple Zooms yesterday, I'm going to be on the phone. And I've got uh -huh. confirmed guests for Friday because uh -huh. of you know, Robin that, stating that and declaring that. And I just wanted to say that that's powerful. You, you, you got, Betsy, thank you so much. You said so many gold nuggets there. You got to announce it to the world. I mean, no one wants a half delusional, like walking around. I might do it. I might try. Hell no. I'm going to kick butt. Like I'm going to get a hundred people there. I'm going to get, I'm sorry, but you got to announce it to the world. Like I'm going to win a state championship this year. People want to follow winners and go getters. And that's just the way it is. If you're sitting around like, I might, I might, nobody wants to follow that. I don't want to invest my money in I might. Right. So what you just said, Betsy is so key. And here's what's so crazy. Colorado Springs. I'm going to use this as an example. Today's Tuesday. We're you, we've got, over a hundred years of experience coming to Colorado Springs. If you were to add it up, Todd Rowley, Tracy Turnberg, Chris Doyle, Andrew Rosser, Crystal Vance, like that actually is flying in to come to Colorado Springs. And so I'm sitting here and if I, if I'm in Colorado Springs right now, I'm going selfishly, I'm going, and I'm going to use Robin because she don't care. I, if I'm Robin, I'm going, okay, here's my power line. I, I'm, I'm going to get everybody in my power line I possibly can because this is security, okay? This is security for the future. But let's just say, now, the, the numbers are not correct, okay? So don't, don't go there. But let's say Robin's doing 6,000 in product volume a week, and she wants to get to 13,334 because we all know that's a nice, hefty bonus of income position bonus, pay line bonus, all this stuff. So here's my gout. Here's my gout, you know. So she's sitting here going, let's just, for the sake of numbers, just say 7,000. She's going, I got a deficit. I got to get to 7,000 PV. Well, then what Robin is doing is she's calling every person right there. And, and, and here's the way she's looking at it. For every person I get into the seat, it is money in my pocket, money in my pocket, future towards my goal. And everybody in Colorado Springs right now should have that same mission, <laughs> same mission, because it's like, wh why not? That It's the next event. I've got these over 100 years of experience coming in that's going to mingle with my people. And all they're going to do is drive so much belief that my people are going to go out and work even harder. And at the end of the day, I'm up here with a big old cheese eating grin on my face, smiling. And that's leverage. That is leverage. I've never understood going into an event and all these people come in from out of town and the people in the hometown does all the speaking and they leave everybody else in the back that flew in. And it's like, your people have heard from you a million times. Use all the experts you just flew in from across the country. And also leverage it. So, Betsy, I'm so proud that you said that because that is, if, if, if I'm in Florence, Alabama, and everybody's coming into my hometown, that's the way I'm going to strategically build for the event. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. Anybody else? 
Hey, hey, Nick, pop us. Thanks, Brent. Yeah, so, so we're commencing our first ever road show this weekend. And we are a global company. And there's a lot of people on this call that are building in Africa and South Africa. And I'm extending a welcome to anybody that knows people in Johannesburg or in Nigeria that knows people in South Africa, bring them. They've got data issues. They can't get on Zooms. The, the opportunity is now. We've got it in Johannesburg on Saturday, in Bloemfontein the next uh, Monday, and then we're going to go to Cape Town in, in June. So uh, watch the flyers, bring the people, and we'll help you put them in. And, and you got a multi-million dollar business in your hands, Nick. I know you're going to get because going on the road and doing that and then leveraging cross-line, sideline, is just everybody can play who do you know and then you take care of them and your people take care of them and then they repay the favor. That's what's so big. And it's like our Colorado Springs event this weekend. Play who do you know. Anna, who do you know in Colorado Springs? Go to Facebook. Look at your friends list. See if they're in Colorado Springs or in Denver. Get them to the event. And the beautiful thing about our culture is here's what you can appreciate. The people in Colorado Springs, they're going to take care of your people, meaning they're going to be hospitable and then turn them over to you to enroll exactly where you want them, okay? We take care of each other. That's what's so powerful. So, Betsy, again, thanks for your comment, Nick. Thanks for yours. Same way in Africa. I mean, the culture they're building over there, unbelievable. And, Nick, it, it, it starts with people like you and just the willingness and, and excited about the future there. All right, guys, we're out of time. I hope this helped today. I hope you got some value. Dr. Crystal Vance, thank you. Coach Roland, I know if you're on, thank you for the lesson you gave us last night and the vision. And, and you led me to my first part today talking about pointing people and using this two-by-two two working through three-way calls and two-on-ones and things like that. Guys, we love you. We appreciate you. Have a great Tuesday. We'll see you back next week. Thanks, Brent. Uh -huh. It was awesome. Thank you. Thank you.